evening and welcome to the Combined Neighborhood Watch Meeting and Amazing Citizen Award. I'd like to thank everybody for coming in person, everybody watching on Culpeper Media and on our Facebook live page. Um, before we begin, uh, I just want to recognize a few key people that are here with us. Um, the uh, town manager, Chris Hively, is here with us. Um, town Mayor Frank Reeves is with us. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Councilwoman Janie Schmidt is with us, and the president of the Culpeper Fire and Rescue Association, uh, Junior Perryman, is in the back. So um, before we get to our amazing citizen and our great guest speaker for our program, uh, there is a short video that we would like to present to just sh showcase why this person is so amazing. Welcome to Culpeper, a town and county unlike any other pastoral views, a vibrant downtown, where destinations and activities abound. There is one aspect in particular that helps Culpeper rise above the rest, the people. Every day, all over the community, people are working to make a difference. I think the first thought that comes to my mind about an amazing citizen is one that does extraordinary things in the community. That means they do amazing things. They always have the hand open to give. They're always willing to step out there and do whatever that person needs. And Mr. Smithers has always stepped out in his community and done an excellent job very involved and, and, and so often behind the scenes, not up front and, you know, getting all the glory for it. So that's what makes this uh, presentation such a, a nice honor uh, because of, of, of the amazing person that Elvin really is. I don't actually consider very many people to be highly outstanding community servants, but he falls into that handful of folks that I would identify as that. Well, Mr. Smithers is absolutely an amazing citizen, and before that, he is an amazing person. If I had something going on, I'd call him and say, Mr. Smithers, I'm going to have this or that, and I need this or that, and he always came through. It didn't matter what it was, he always came through. And he also, he and Mrs. Smithers adopted one of my seniors, which they took care of for, I would say, three or four years. He would. Uh, pick up prescriptions for her, take her places if she needed to be. He would pick up groceries for her. They would go out and do things for her, and he'd do things like um, darning a screen door, or run shopping, all kinds of just errands that he could do to help her that she couldn't help herself. She became very ill um, and sadly has now passed away, but uh, she was in uh, Fredericksburg Hospital for about three months. And uh, they, they visited her every week that she was in the hospital there and they were the only people to visit her. She had no family, no friends, neighbors looking in on her. On her. So uh, I think that when we think about an amazing citizen, um, there's an amazing love and care. Just exudes that, just exudes that unconditional love. That's the best way I know to put it, you know? <laughs> I think he's a person that can look back on his past and present and even future life and be able to say, you know, I live life the way that I think everybody should. Um, more hard work, family dedication, community dedication, and, uh, you know, devotion to faith. And he was certainly a positive influence on me. He has uh, a very strong faith that guides and leads him in everything that he does and says. A uh, very successful businessman in the community here, uh, very well known uh, in the um, Methodist Church and his activities there. He served uh, his church over many years. He led with an open heart, calmness, listening ears with vision and clarity. Uh, to really a grander mission in our church and community to share God's unconditional love with everybody. I think it's his heart. He just has a big heart and he, he likes to live the Christian way. And he likes it when night comes, he can put his head on the pillow and he knows that he's helped somebody and he's made a big difference. 
that's the kind of fellow he is. Well, uh, I would say, Elvin, um, congratulations. Uh, I can't, can't think of a more deserving person than, um, than you for this kind of uh, recognition. Uh, I am proud to call you my best friend. There are still beautiful days ahead of us, my friend. Congratulations. Mr. Edis, and I just have to say congrats, Elvin, for, you know, uh, receiving this amazing Citizen Award because you're so deserving. We love you. I just think that he's an awesome person and he's done so much for so many. There's no way you could really pinpoint everything that he's done. And knowing him, he'll continue to do it. Congratulations, Grandpa. At this time, I would uh, ask Major Settle and uh, Chief Jenkins to come on up. Oh, this here? You, you want to stand here or you want up? Sure, I'll stand here. Okay. Can I? Yeah. Hello, I'm Major Settle at the Colorado Police Department. And before I introduce our special uh, speaker uh, to honor Mr. Smithers, first off, congratulations. Real quick story, this is a Neighborhood Watch meeting, so I figured I got to share the story for for everyone. Uh, when I called Mr. Smithers to let him know that he'd been unanimously, overwhelmingly unanimously uh, selected for this amazing citizen award, he thought it was a scam call, which, well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that is good. And thankfully, I had, I had called his family to make sure he was available tonight uh, first, so he picked up the phone and called his family, and they had to con confirm that it was not a scam call. So good job, Mr. Smithers, for, for thinking that. So, uh, so uh, I'm going to introduce Mark Reborden at this time. He is a representative from Abigail Spanberger's office, a representative to uh, Congress. Uh, unfortunately, she couldn't be here, but she did uh, provide a resolution and a letter here in support of Mr. Smithers and his award. So, Mark, the floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Mark Reborden. I work for the Congresswoman's office, and I'm here today to personally hand deliver uh, this letter of recognition uh, to you, sir. Uh, so I'll go ahead and read this letter. Dear Mr. Smithers, as the U.S. Representative for Virginia's 7th Congressional District, it is my true pleasure to offer you my congratulations on being recognized with the Culpeper Police Department's Amazing Citizen Award. The Amazing Citizen Award recognizes individuals in the community who go above and beyond in making Culpeper a better place. You've served the Culpeper area well throughout your career with the development and expansion of Merchants Grocery Company. Beyond your career, your work to better your community is clear through the numerous individual awards you receive throughout your life. It's my pleasure to congratulate you on this well-deserved award. Thank you again for your dedication to the town of Culpeper and its community members. I'm pleased to join with the community in recognizing you for this award, and I look forward to future opportunities to thank you for your service to the Culpeper community. Sincerely. Abigail Spamberger. Uh, Chief Chris Jenkins will come on up and have a few remarks and hand out all the hardware. Uh, Mr. Smithers, you're pretty smart. I get calls from the major all the time, and I think they're scam calls, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will tell you it is indeed a, uh, an honor and a privilege of mine uh, to be able to present this award to you tonight, Mr. Smithers. I uh, have admired you for a, a lot of years and the way you've conducted business, and uh, you are truly a professional and a class act. Um, it's, it's interesting. We, we, um, every community has great restaurants. Every community has great shops. Downtown is a great place of to, to, to town to have grown up like I did. But I think it's truly the people that makes Culpeper, it defines who we are as a community, as a community. And you have certainly spent a lifetime uh, contributing to making Culpeper the great community that we are. Uh, and, and I have to tell a little story too, is that I met you more than 40 years ago. I, I don't know if he even remembers when we met, but uh, me and Nate Jasper uh, put on a community uh, bicycle safety and registration program every year through the 4-H. Uh, and one of the things we did at the Baptist Church, we had a great crowd, and we, we obviously you needed uh, funds and prizes and things like that to support. So we went down to this old warehouse 
Uh, I was trying to tell some of these folks today where, where Merchants Groceries used to be located, uh, and I couldn't get anybody that could remember where it was at, but it was uh, located right along uh, Stephen Street and going to U.S. Avenue, right along the railroad tracks, uh, and it was an old warehouse, and they, we were directed to Mr. Smithers' office, and we, believe me, we had gone around to all these businesses, and you have to go through all this red tape, and you got to go through corporate offices and, and do all this stuff. And we sat down in five minutes. He, when he found out the program was supporting the youth in our community, he reached down to his right desk drawer, and he pulled out a checkbook, and he supported our program from that year on. And, um, again, that was more than 40-some years ago, and he's clearly spent a lifetime uh, in supporting worthy programs in, in our community. This group on this film, Mr. Dasher, the Honorable Gladys Williams, uh, they said it the best, that, and they've summed it up. Um, you're just a class act for this community. You represent what this award is all about, is the people that have done things uh, without looking for uh, awards or accolades or front page stories. Uh, you've been in this town all your life. I don't know that I've ever seen a story in our, in our local paper uh, uh, acknowledging all the good that you do. So we are glad to be the instrument for this community, a very grateful community that can just say thank you, Mr. Smithers, for all that you have done for this community. Uh, and it, again, it is an honor and a privilege personally for me to be able to stand here and represent the town and the police department to be able to present these awards to you. So, as the major said, there is a little hardware that goes along with this award. Now, uh, uh, a couple of recipients passed. Uh, uh, they asked me, said, well, how long does this award last? You know, is it 30 days, 60 days, a year? I said, this is a lifetime award. You will always and have always been a Culpeper Amazing Citizen, and we're just making it official tonight, so come on up. <laughs> yeah, I do have my, they gave me glasses to put around my neck, but I think I can do this without glasses. <laughs> okay. It is with great honor that we present Evelyn Smithers with our Amazing Citizen Award. In recognition of your endless efforts dedicated to community outreach and involvement, the Culpeper Police Department and the community we serve appreciate your dedication and unconditional support. Your commitment to community service truly epitomizes what makes you an amazing citizen. Congratulations on this outstanding accomplishment, June of 2022. As you know, we uh, have a, a, this amazing community that supports our amazing uh, citizen award. So they would like to present a few tokens to you, and I'll let the major pick out. Uh, I, he always, for some reason, goes to the green roost first. I'm not sure why. We'll do that last this time. We'll do that last this time. Just for Mr. Smith. So the first of all, we have a gift certificate here from Moving Meadows Farm. And I'm pretty sure this uh, beautiful plant uh, present to... Uh, well, that's Shannon Door. Shannon Door, I'm sorry. Moving Meadows is the best... Cinnamon buns. Cinnamon buns and tail. So here's a gift certificate from Moving Meadows. Okay. We're going we to load you up. <laughs> Shannon Door Garden Spot, I kind of ruined that, but this beautiful plant from Shannon Door Garden Spot, and also another gift certificate from Shannon Door Garden Spot. <laughs> we have a dinner for two. It's about time. I'm available tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think Mr. Smithers is available tomorrow. That's <laughs> true. And then the best bakery on the planet, Canacles. I get a certificate there. It's right across the street from the Green Roost. <laughs> and last but not least, I hear a family member was in the Green Roost uh, the past couple days picking this out just for you. So here's a small gift from Green Roost. I pick what I like. <laughs> 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 
Okay. 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 You know what? I'm going to take all this from you real quick. Okay. And uh, you have a little more work to do. Uh-oh. I think you got plenty of help in the house tonight, Mr. Smithers. You, you, you'll be able to help you with all of that. Uh, we'll, we'll let you choose that. But as we do uh, always, Mr. Smithers, we would offer the, the microphone and hear to you for any comments that you'd like to make to the crowd that's assembled here this evening. Well, this is really hard to do. Uh, this is a big surprise for me. And when I got the call from Chris uh, Settle, like he said, I thought it was a scam call. It said, said untitled uh, uh, phone or something like that. So I started to hang it up, but he said something about Glass Williams and Aaron, our granddaughter, and I knew it was legit. So anyway, but <clears throat> standing here at this moment, uh, this is uh, very, very nice, quite, quite, quite an honor for me to be here receiving this award. With all the things that's been said about me, uh, you know, I think we live in a time when we look around and there's always a, always someone we can help out there. There's, uh, we can make a difference in other people's lives. And I think all of us need to follow that, uh, that way and try to help other people because, uh, you know, and we've heard a lot about defund the police. I think we need to defend the police. And because we appreciate you guys so much for what you're do, doing for our community. And, uh, this is a great moment for me, and I really appreciate it. Chris, thank you very much. Um, just want to say uh, my lovely wife here, Andrea, has been with me. Tomorrow we're celebrating our 61st wedding anniversary. So, uh, we got the flowers in the Yeah, yeah. so anyway. <laughs> and I, but anyway, thank you so much for this opportunity to serve and to and it's never over with. You know, we always, there's always things we can do for our community and for others and uh, just, be a, just be out there. People don't have to come to us. We need to go to them. There's plenty of things to do. So anyway, thank you very much. God bless. Uh, again, just... Uh, Congratulations, Mr. Smithers. Um, at this time, we will take a short break, uh, probably about 10, 15 minutes, uh, so Mr. Smithers and family can come up for photos. And for everybody else, uh, there's plenty of food, so please go back and get some more food. And after the break, we will uh, start with our presentation, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, before we get started on the uh, next item of the meeting, I just want to inform you, for those of you that uh, may have come in late or already received a packet, um, we have two citizens, or sorry, two um, ladies out front that work for the town office. Um, they're out front in the lobby right now. I tried to get them to come in. Um, but they are Courtney Strauser and Catherine Maines. They work for the clerk's office. Um, <laughs> So they, they are trying to re, uh, recruit citizens who are looking for enthusiastic, enthusiastic citizens interested in working to meet the challenges and accomplish the goals within town. Um, they are asking for volunteering of time, talents, and expertise to one of our authorities, boards, and commissions. Um, so if you are interested and you're working, or sorry, watching at home, you can always contact the clerk's office at 540. 829-8240 and either ask for Courtney or Catherine. And uh, examples of some of the boards uh, that they are, uh, you would be working for would be the Culpeper Parking Authority Board and the Public Transportation Board. So I just wanted to touch base with that. Oh, and uh, she's in the back room there. So there's Courtney. <laughs> Um, so we'll go ahead and get started uh, with the second part of the uh, program. So I would like to introduce um, Captain Tim Chilton, and he's going to speak briefly on some of our upcoming projects um, with the town. And then after uh, that, we will introduce uh, Master Police Officer Tim Sis, who will be doing our uh, presentation this evening. Hello, good evening to everybody. We've got uh, a couple different partnerships that we just started. Well, actually, one of them that's been a long-time partnership with RRCSB. And 
some of the things that they've given us to start working into the community is, is um, things that are safety related, things that are mental health related, things that are substance abuse related. So what we had decided to do was do a couple different events here at the police department and here are different outreach groups out in the community. So if you have a need or if you have, uh, if your neighborhood would like our folks to come out and do something there with any of these items to give back to the community, we can certainly do that. So the first one is it's gonna be a, it's a needs kit basically. And these kits are, they're kind of controversial, but they're certainly something that we need in the, uh, in the community. These are, it's a, it's a doses of Narcan, which is something that's an opioid reversal. There's uh, test strips in here for fentanyl. And these are folks that are really having trouble getting off of drugs, but we're also trying to get them to do something or giving them something that they don't overdose, in other words. And if for some reason that they do overdose, we're giving them something that can help them with the Narcan. So a number of things in this little kit here that we're gonna give out with our, with our co-responders. And if you don't know about our co-responder program, we actually have two folks that ride with our officers um, during the day and at the evening that are mental health workers. And they're gonna be giving these things out. What's that? This is, it is the nasal spray. So it's a, it's a one shot nasal spray Narcan. So it's a good thing. Second thing, this is, this is not obviously not a total safe, but it's something that you can lock pills up with, keep them away from the kids. Um, it's not horrible to break into, but a small kid can't get to your, your medicines in other words. We have plenty of these here on hand tonight. If you want one before you leave, we can certainly get you one of these. And then um, these are drug disposals. So if you have, like we have the drug disposal box out front, you can bring those in, you can drop your, your drugs off there, we take care of disposing it for you. But if you have no way of getting here, what you do with these, you fill this up halfway with the water, you put your pills inside, shake it up, it dissolves them, throw it in the trash. So you don't have to come in here. We have tons of these here tonight too. So we can certainly give you as many of these as you want to take home with you. And then the last thing is uh, gun locks. As we all know, gun safety is, is paramount for, for the community. And we have tons of these through RSCSB as well. So if you have pistols or shotguns that you want to lock up, we can give you as many of these as you need as well. So uh, two other things. One is this Saturday, we partnered with Found and Sons at Funeral Home, and it's going to be a community cleanup day. I don't know if you noticed it on our, our Facebook pages, but it got shared quite a bit of times, I think 50 or 60 times. So we're hoping to get about 100, uh, 100 volunteers out, and we're going to be working the intersection from Bell Avenue all the way back to the, the uh, first circle there at Wendy's and McDonald's for trash cleanup. And then we're gonna take from um, 522 at Evans all the way to the county line, or to count, town and county line, past Fountain Sons cleaning up. We're also gonna do, if we have enough folks, we're gonna do the town square and uh, Yale Park. So anybody that wants to come out and help with that, you might have to wear a hard hat, you might have to wear a vest, and but we'll give you all the stuff to take care of. The cops will be, behind you and making sure everybody's safe for those things too. Blue Red Santa, I think Tim's probably gonna talk about that. That's probably our biggest event that we do here at the police department. Obviously, you know, we do things a lot different than a lot of police departments. We're embedded 100% into the community, as you know, as the reason you guys are here. But being embedded in that community, the Blue Red Santa gives back to, what did you do last year, 150 kids? 150 kids, uh, a little bit over 20,000. So about $20,000 that's, that's made for these children for a Christmas. So. It's certainly something huge that we, uh, we, we've jumped into. I think it's our seventh or eighth year now, isn't it? This will be our seventh. Yeah, so another big project, but anybody that wants to help with that, see Tim, and he'll certainly, certainly put you in charge with uh, or in tune with somebody that can help you get onto the committees and things like that, okay? But see me after this is over, and I'll get you as much, much of this stuff as you like. Thanks. Um, just to follow up uh, what the captain said, uh, this Saturday is 8 to 12. Uh, the cleanup is the time, and we're meeting at Culpeper Town Square for anybody that's interested in helping out. And with that, I'll introduce our guest speaker. Um, this one we didn't have to outsource. We, we had him here in-house, so we're getting them pumped up in the back. Uh, <laughs> Master Police Officer Detective uh, Tim Sis will be talking about crime prevention and uh, SEPTED. So, 
Sir, come on up. Yay, Tim. All right, I am not a podium person, so does this thing come off there? Actually, yes, okay. Um, there's a lot of faces out here tonight I am very familiar with and I do know, um, but as Lieutenant Banks said, I am a detective here at the police department. I've been here at the police department now for 22 years. Uh, prior to that, I was at the sheriff's office for about six years, so I've got about 28 years of service under my belt. and. Uh, as the chief said, this is a great community to uh, grow up in, and I've been here all my life and plan on staying here the rest of it. So um, tonight, what they've asked me to talk about, let's see if I can get this. Okay. Yeah, I can't really see it. There we go. There we go. Technology is not my thing. Um, what they've asked me to talk about tonight is some crime prevention and crime prevention through environmental design. Um, currently, I am a crime prevention certified through the state, and I also uh, currently sit on the board of directors for the Piedmont Regional Crime Prevention Association. Uh, one of the big things that we talk about, especially going into the summertime when you're doing a lot of cleanup and stuff outside, is crime prevention through environmental design. And what we mean by that is, is the way our surroundings look and how we present um, our houses, our businesses, and stuff of that nature. So I promise this will only be like a two and a half to three hour presentation. Um, Oh, they didn't tell you all, sorry. Uh, basically, the definition for SEPTED is the proper design and effective use of the built environment that can lead to a reduction in the incidence and fear of crime and an improvement in the quality of life. That is the Wikipedia definition of it. Uh, when we talk about crime prevention through environmental design, we're talking about simply reading our environment. It's no different than picking up a book. If you pick up a book, you read the first couple chapters, you kind of got away of what's happening with the book. Same thing. When you're walking out to a business, walking out to your house, you constantly need to look at your surroundings and be able to read what those surroundings are saying to you. All right, I already said that, but anyway. Um, also, when we look at crime prevention, we look at the four Ds. And when we talk about the four Ds, we talk about uh, deny. We want to be able to deny entry from somebody that's unwanted to come into our property. We also look at delay. How can I delay this from happening? The other one is detect. What can I use to detect that somebody or something has entered my property? Now with technology, everybody got ring doorbells? I love those things. Um, there's doing something wrong on this thing okay there's surveillance equipment there's ring doorbells uh, ring doorbells have been spectacular especially from a law enforcement perspective too because we've been able to see a lot of things have access to things that you just wouldn't normally see on a regular basis and also to deter how can I deter criminals from committing criminal activities so as we talk tonight on SEPTED we're going to talk about those things, and I want to show you something here, and I do a little dramatic effect there, say for scared, because I want you to look at something, and all I want you to do is think about if you were in this environment, would you feel safe, or would you feel frightened? It looked like something that we could see anywhere, right? So. In this, what we look at is we're looking at observation points to where would this invite people that are law-abiding citizens or would this invite people that would probably want to intake in some sort of criminal activity? All right, criminal activity. Because if we look at certain things, as we look at sight lines, we're looking at how well can we see things? How well can they see us? So as you see here, it's obviously a lot, and that's not Culpeper, by the way, uh, but there's obviously a lot that is fully open. 
Uh, you see there's some fencing on the backside, but a lot of trash on the steps, trees have overgrown, and it's like it's right there on the street. Now, if it's dusk at night, you don't see any lights or anything there, obviously, but would you feel safe walking by that? Because you can't see who's sitting on those steps. So the next picture, a little different ball game. Because one of the things that we're looking at is, and again, that's also not in Culpeper, but uh, one of the things that we look at here is sight lines. Can we clearly see all the way down the street we can see across the street, the flags are very nice, uh, the flower borders and everything is clean, well kept, but it actually defines the area to where we can see and be seen. And that is something that we definitely want to keep in mind. Three principles that we look at anytime that you hear the word septed is territoriality, surveillance, and access control. These are the three main core principles of any time that we're dealing with this. Uh, these are things that we need to look at. And when I talk about territoriality, it's not, it's not what we think of gang war or something of that nature of claiming that territory, but it's basically showing ownership and taking pride into your property or into your business that you may have. Um, the other thing are surveillance from a law enforcement perspective, we say surveillance, we think long hours in the car, <laughs> watching an area, or setting up cameras, or something of that nature. But surveillance is as simple as neighbors watching neighbors. That's what Neighborhood Watch is all about. Um, it's as simple as observing things that aren't normal. You guys live in your neighborhood each and every day. We as police officers, we drive through a couple times, you know, during the day, a couple times a week, but you know what's not right. And that's why we rely on you guys to be able to read that environment and tell us, and we can come in and assist you. Um, and the last thing is access control. And the biggest thing that we mean by access control is who is able to access your house or your business, how many keys are out, um, is there fencing? Is there alarm systems? And we're going to get into that in this two and a half hour presentation. Uh, all right, on territoriality, again, we're just talking about ownership. And we're talking about basically defense and maintenance of our properties, of how we present it. And people protect or defend space that they occupy. Um, if you own a house, or you rent a house, you're proud of that spot of where you live, so you're gonna take care of it. So you're gonna present it as your territory. And also, a clean and well-lit uh, places encourage positive social behaviors. So if we take care of our properties and we see uh, pleasant, clean, maintained places, it's gonna invite us, we wanna go to that. If we go down a street and there's a business that has a lot of trash outside, um, it has broken windows, stuff of that nature, are you going to be invited to go into there? Is that something that's going to call you and say, that's a place I want to go? Probably not. So these are things that we look at. We also, again, clean, well-maintained spaces attracts law-abiding citizens to where dirty and disorderly attracts citizens of criminal activity. And some of the strategies here, uh, again, you've heard me say maintenance several times, is uh, maintaining your property, um, front porches. Now, some houses that are built today don't have the nice long front porches that I was used to growing up and Chief was used to growing up, but the porches are inviting to where people can actually sit outside, talk to their neighbors, talk to one another. This again creates that automatic um, surveillance of watching neighbors. Uh, I had a case once that I remember that we worked several home burglaries and we actually mapped it out. And when I finally got to a suspect, 
um, we sat down and we interviewed this person and we said, we don't understand you hit all of these houses around this very dominant neighborhood, but you didn't hit any house in the neighborhood. Why? And the answer that we got was they have an active neighborhood watch and those people are nosy. That's exactly what I heard, but they're right because neighbors looking after neighbors, that's that natural surveillance to where it was obvious in this particular case that that was a reason why these houses were not hit. Uh, home communities, uh, gardens, indoor act, uh, outdoor activity areas. Again, if we look at SEPTED overall, especially in our community, um, again, I've grown up here all my life. Things have definitely changed. Um, we have a lot of community activities where we invite young children. We have, we have parks that are well maintained. We have events. So these are all part of the overall concept of SEPTED. Um, seasonal decorations, we all have had that neighbor that has their Christmas lights up until the middle of July. But um, again, it goes back to the territoriality. They are proud of what they have. They're going to display it. Yard art, we're going to talk about here in a minute. But uh, these are all different things that helps establish that territoriality. Speaking of the yard art, OK? Now, again, that house is not in Culpeper. Uh, but this is a classic case of territoriality to where <laughs> the chief's laughing back here. <laughs> it could be, sir. Um, but again, it's clean. It's probably not something that I would want, but they're proud of it. They're displaying it. It's not, quote unquote, junky. Um, but it's clean and it definitely defines their space and defines their territory. Another example, what do we see here? At this point, we do see a fencing. This is an apartment complex. Um, and we do see fencing around the apartment complex. But if we notice, as we look down this row of houses, what do we see that's different? How is it it? How is it expressing its territoriality from one place to the other? If you see each stoop or each front porch area is painted differently. So it's that in the one in the middle is actually a green, but they're painted differently. So that expresses the territoriality of where one piece of property stops and another piece of property actually begins. This is a business. Now, if you notice in this business, it's one large building, but again, simple. It's painted differently. Each business actually expresses it in a different color. Uh, clean. Now, is that inviting? Is that somewhere that you might be traveling or visiting and go, hey, I would like to go check out the business and see what they have. They have signage outside, which tells you a little bit about what could be in there. Uh, they have signs outside. Uh, there's flags flying. So it's a very inviting type of business. All right, when we talk about the second core principle of SEPTED, we talk about surveillance. And basically, it's very simple. It's the ability to be seen and the ability to see. If we are walking or going to a place and we can't see where we're going, we're naturally going to have that fear to where we don't want to go there because we don't know what is lying around the corner. We don't know what is in the dark. We don't know what is behind that door or that wall. So naturally, as people, we're not going to go there. If we can see what's happening and see what's occurring ahead of us, then we're curious. We'll go ahead. We're safe. We can proceed forward. Um, people must be able to see illegal activities to report it. If you see it, see something, say something. Uh, surveillance puts the offender under, underneath the threat of being observed. One thing in 28 years of doing this, and Chief, I'm sure you can agree, bad guys don't want to be seen. They don't want to be seen. They don't want to be noticed. They don't want to be caught. So again, we go back to all these concepts that we're talking about. And if we can see them, 
then at that point in time, you can relay the information to the authorities or to other neighbors uh, of what has happened and what is going on. Now, a lot of strategies when it comes to surveillance is um, a lot of your criminal activities and stuff we all know can happen after dark. Again, criminals not being able to be seen. So lighting, how many people leave a porch light on all night long? I hear a lot of times people goes, well, that's expensive. It costs you about eight cents a day to leave that light going. And with LED lights now, it's even cheaper. Uh, but we look at, again, front porches, setting out on your front porch uh, in the evenings. Um, electronic surveillance we've talked about. Um, and when we talk about, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a picture here in a minute, but when we talk about businesses especially, uh, one of the things that we look at is, is there a lot of clutter in your windows? And a lot of people ask me, well, why, why does that matter? If there's clutter in my windows. It goes to something that I call the fishbowl effect. If you ever take a fishbowl and you put it on the table, you see around it 360 degrees, you can see all the way through it. If you put stickers or something on that bowl, you can't see that fish any longer, correct? So the same thing with the clutter on the windows. If you put clutter on your windows, then I as law enforcement or anybody else, we can't see into that business and you can't see out of that business. So it is very helpful to make sure, especially from a business standpoint, that your windows are free of that clutter. Because if we look here, this is actually a bus stop uh, next to a bank. But if we notice, that bus stop is actually clear. Uh, you can see through it. And the person inside the bank who is actually leaning up against the counter there uh, can see out. So this is part of that fishbowl effect. This is an old picture, and it is from Canada. But um, this was an old 7-Eleven that um, was, the picture was actually taken late at night. But if you look, standing out in the parking lot, I can clearly see in that store, and you can clearly see out of that store. So the clerk was there working by themselves, which 90% of them do. They're there working by themselves, and they see somebody approaching that may have something in their hands. They can lock the door. They can call the police, but they can see it. Okay. If I, as a police officer, show up, I can actually park my unit back here a little bit, see into the store and see what's happening and what I can do to tactically get there and be able to assist and help. So this is what I mean by the fishbowl effect, is being able to actually see your surroundings and whatever is on the inside of that, being able to see out. How many times do we go to shopping centers or parking lots and there's trees that you can't see across the parking lot? All right, this is a prime example of surveillance using landscaping. Common rule of thumb on any landscaping, especially trees, is to keep the canopy about six feet off the ground. Because the average, the average height of a human is usually around six feet. So if you keep the canopy up to six feet, you can clearly see through that canopy, see what's on the other side, and safely be able to approach your car, um, especially in the evenings. Now, even at night, this parking lot does have uh, lights all through it, but that light will actually permeate and go underneath that trees to where it will light up the car areas. So this is one thing that I tell a lot of home um, homeowners is watch what you put around your windows. Uh, a lot of times back in the old days, uh, I remember growing up that we had these big English boxwood bushes that covered the front windows and it grew up completely against the house. Well, if I'm a bad guy, that's the place I want to be because nobody from the street's going to be able to see me. So um, if you notice now when they do a lot of the landscaping and a lot of the planning, they put in azalea bushes and low-lying bushes and keep it underneath the, uh, the sill of the window. And that way the windows are clear and you go back to that fishbowl effect of what we just talked about.
Other thing is closed circuit televisions. Um, they've been around for a while. Of course, the technology has gotten much better. Uh, we talked about the ring doorbells and the technology there. Uh, the ring, when ring came out, it was probably a huge step forward for crime prevention because not only did we didn't have to use little peepholes anymore, but you could be 10 miles away or in another state and be able to see who's at your front door now. Um, so the technology has definitely advanced a lot when it comes to SEPTED and when it comes to crime prevention. Now, the last core principle is access control. And basically, when we talk about access control, we're denying or restrict access to crime targets. So now we're going back to what we said in the beginning of the program uh, of one of the four Ds, which is deny. So we're denying that criminal activity to occur or to happen. So we direct people into buildings or sites uh, of how we want them to go in. And what I mean by that is I got some pictures here. Well, will in a minute. But some of the strategies that we have for that is locks, barriers, um, control emergency exits, fence off problem areas. Um, a lot of buildings, and we can take our building, the entrance that you came through. When you park in the parking lot, we have that canopy with the name of the building on. So even if you've never been here before, you're going to know this is where they want me to go. This is the public access. This is where I want to go. And if you also notice on the outside, there's ballards out there or um, yellow post, okay? They're there for multiple reasons. Number one, it's also directing you to that area. And number two, it's also there to prevent vehicles or any type of uh, vehicle intrusion of coming into the building. But again, a lot of the access control devices uh, time lock saves is a big one. Uh, I've got a very old picture on here that I left it in the presentation because I know many of you will remember these. But um, a lot of businesses use a time lock to where uh, there was a point to where 7-Elevens, for example, and this is the picture that will be coming up here in a minute. But there were certain times that you had to put in the 20s, 50s, and 100s, I believe it was the three denominations. And that safe was actually set at 5 o'clock. Whatever you had in the drawer, you put it in there, and it actually would lock. Um, but again, when we talk about access control, this is an apartment complex that obviously has a key access to where you can come up, you buzz yourself in, and you can go into the apartment. What do we see here? Elementary school. Again, it's designed to where it has that canopy overlooks the parking lot, crosswalks right in front. So again, if we've never been to that school before, we know that's where they want us to enter. If we look at the columns, those are just like what we have out front, but those are ballards that are actually placed there for any vehicle intrusion. So a vehicle cannot actually drive up and go through the, that area. Access control can also be as simple as signage of saying at certain times you cannot turn down these streets. Um, Myrtle Beach is a prime example. They have no cruising during certain areas or where you can't go back and forth on the street. Um, a lot of times if we travel up north, we will see uh, HOV lanes. Again, that's all access control. And this is the oldie but goodie. Does anybody ever remember seeing one of those in 7-Eleven back in the day? There are still some 7-Elevens that still use those. But that is a time lock safe uh, to where at certain periods of time it does request that certain denominations be put in. And, and what that does, and it was actually signage on the businesses saying it's a time lock controlled safe to where I empty my drawer. All my 50s, 100s, and 20s are pretty much gone. You know, I got enough there to make a uh, change with, but that's about it. And nobody can get into that except managers had access control and the store owners, and that was about it. Oops. All right, some of the tools that, some of the tools that we use, um, I went a little fast there, but 
is lighting. Um, again, there are several styles of lights that are out there that if you simply keep a light on your front porch or on your property, or the ones that are very popular these days are the solar motion lights that you can get. They're solar powered. They don't take any energy at all. If somebody walks in front of it, the lights automatically come on. Um, landscaping, again, it goes back to that territoriality a little bit, but it definitely shows signs of ownership and defines your area and your territory. Again, we talked a lot about individual houses and we talked some about businesses, but when you look overall, and you can take our town and our community uh, with different types of septed devices that are out there. The traffic circles was a big contention years ago. Um, but again, traffic circles is a traffic calming device that is a septed technique that uh, some people absolutely hated the traffic circles. Personally, I love them. Um, but again, you don't have that traffic light that's controlling that intersection and you have a 15 minute wait to get to your street. Um, but all of these are actually traffic calming uh, devices that is all part of SEPTED. And again, we go back and we look at maintenance, and we don't only look at maintenance when it comes to individual maintenance, but we also look at the maintenance that our community does. Uh, community that we live in, we, we have an outstanding public works department that takes care of the median strips, they take care of the trash, we don't see a lot of things that you could see when you travel to other cities and other places. Um, so these are all part, again, of SEPTEP concepts. Target hardening um, has definitely been something that a lot of people have talked about over the years of how can I make my home safer, my business safer, and things that I can do to harden that target. Um, this is actually a picture of a deadbolt. And the deadbolt, and anybody that does anything in crime prevention, that's the only thing that's a lock. Uh, the little thing that you get on the door that you turn, that is a closing device. That is not a lock, all right? This is a lock. Um, it actually goes inside of the door frame and it actually can help prevent from somebody coming in. It makes it a whole lot harder. Um, the doorknobs, it has the little key on, on it. Believe it or not, credit cards work like crazy. Uh, this is a little harder to actually get into. So how can we make SEPTED happen? What can we do? What is out there? Um, SEPTED is not just a law enforcement tool, it's not just a law enforcement resource. It's a community resource that goes everywhere from your comprehensive planning, zoning, your building codes. Um, when I was doing a lot of security assessments and threat assessments, I worked very close with our zoning department and uh, building people because they had a lot more uh, tools in their toolbox than sometimes that I had in mind for uh, uh, law enforcement. But these are all different types of partners that you can partner with uh, in the community um, when it comes to SEPTED planning, uh, planners, educators, maintenance people, waste management, private security, of course law enforcement, residents, architects, but these are all different things that uh, you can link up with. And a lot of times, <laughs> the next time, my challenge to you tonight is the next time that you go to a shopping center, I want you to look at something. And I want you to look at the shrubbery and the landscape, especially if it's a well-established shopping center, because I will make you a bet that the landscaper and the lighting contractor did not talk to each other prior to doing it, because you will notice that sometimes you have a beautiful light going right into a bush. Well, it was fine when that bush was little. <laughs> Or you have a light pole that is now inside of a tree, which was fine before the tree grew up. So these are things that, you know, it drives my wife nuts because I go out all the time and look and go, what were they thinking? <laughs> uh, 
But these are all the different types of things that you can look at. And again, it changes over time because what is right now for septed, 10 years from now may not work any longer because you may have to readjust because that tree has gotten bigger, or that shrub has gotten bigger. You may have to cut it back. So these are all different things that you have to look at and it's a constant changing machine. Um, and this is actually a zoning ordinance uh, in the Virginia Code that does help, you know, as far as the general welfare of the public goes. Uh, again, this was a very quick, <laughs> down and dirty, and they told me not to stay up here for two or three hours. So, uh, you know, I do like what I do, so I do listen. Uh, <laughs> but um, again, SEPTED is, uh, it is a concept that a lot of people don't understand, but it is a very valuable tool that you can work with. And at any time, if you have any questions or anything, like I said, I do work here at the police department, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I will even come out and look at your house, walk through with you and give you some suggestions of things that can be done. Um, but again, if there's any questions, that is the presentation for tonight. I hope I didn't bore you guys too bad. Um, but uh, is there any questions? Yes, ma'am. Welcome. You heard it from the boss. <laughs> you, you heard it from the boss. <laughs> so, but uh, I, I love being able to help people. Um, and again, it certain things, again, we walk by every day and we don't think it's an issue or a problem um, because it's been that way for years. And you'll have somebody like me that comes out and goes, uh, yeah, you might want to change that. Um, there was a... There's a church here in town that I did a threat assessment on and worked very closely with their staff and ended up pretty much redoing their entire landscaping. Because um, again, it was hiding certain areas that shouldn't be hidden. But um, again, I will love to work with anybody. If anybody has any questions or anything, I will stick around a little bit afterwards. But again, all you have to do is just give me a call here at the police department, and I'll be more than happy to assist in any way that I can. Lieutenant Banks, I th think I got it underneath the wire, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Um, so if there are no for quite, well, I was going to say if there are no questions for Tim. Uh, okay, we'll go ahead and keep moving. Uh, so again, uh, that basically uh, concludes our presentation for tonight. I just want to thank everyone uh, for coming and um, everyone watching on Facebook Live. Um, I just want to make one more announcement is um, just remember if you have a neighborhood watch, please make contact with your liaison officers. Uh, National Night Out will be August 2nd, Tuesday, August 2nd, and it will be here before we know it. So please reach out to your liaisons for uh, events of what you would like to do in your neighborhoods. Um, Sergeant Caruso, he is, uh, kind of in charge of getting all the, the, the neighborhoods together for, with all the different uh, programs and with coordination with fire and rescue. Um, so with that, that concludes our meeting, and we will get ready for the best part of the meeting, door prizes. So we just want to make sure, does everyone have a ticket for their door prizes? <laughs>